hello friends welcome back to my channel so we are back with another tutorial on Splunk in today's lecture we are going to see how we can monitor Jenkins using Splunk so we are going to make use of Splunk app for Jenkins on Splunk indexer and we will be also using Splunk plugin on Jenkins master so we will go through the step-by-step -step process on how to install Splunk app for Jenkins and also configure the plugin on Jenkins. At the end of this tutorial, we'll be having great dashboards in Splunk, which will give you a complete details on builds, audit trial, JVM threads, memory usage, etc. So let's uh, get started. If you have not uh, subscribed to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share and comment. So to start, I have a Jenkins instance running on a Docker. So if you don't know how to set up Jenkins on Docker, please check my tutorial on in my channel. So if you see Docker PS, you have a, a Jenkins container running. And I also have a Splunk instance running on CentOS. So it's installed under the location slash opt slash Splunk. So you can also refer my channel for how the how to install Splunk on CentOS. So the next step is log into the Splunk and we have to install the Splunk app for Jenkins. So if you go to browse for more apps, you can search for uh, Jenkins and you will be getting the Splunk app for Jenkins. If we go to the Splunk base and uh, look for the Splunk app for Jenkins, you'll be able to see the complete overview of the app. What is the version and what is the supported versions and uh, license. And you'd, you'll be also able to see a beautiful chart on how to create these charts and what all data is available as part of a Splunk app for from Jenkins. So you can refer this uh, link so you'll be able to get more information what all the features available as part of Splunk app for Jenkins. And it also gives the step-by-step -step instruction how you can install Splunk app on a Splunk instance and also how you can install the Splunk uh, plugin on Jenkins. Okay, now let's click on install and you need to log in with the Splunk username and password so let's wait for the installation to be completed okay so let's uh, click on done or click on go to home so we'll be taken to the next screen where you can see this Splunk app for Jenkins is listed so the next step is go to Jenkins master and you need to go to manage Jenkins click on manage plugins and go to the section available so we have to search for uh, the Splunk app here, the Splunk plugin. Okay, so you can see the Splunk plugin here. So select that and click on install without restart. Okay, the installation is uh, proceeding. Let's wait for the installation to be completed. Okay, great. So it's uh, completed. Now, if you go back to manage Jenkins and click on configure system. It's taking some time to load. Okay, now if you scroll down, you'll have a section for uh, Splunk for Jenkins configuration. So here we need to enable this and we need to give some data points. So the first one is the Splunk server IP address or the you know, a host name. If it's a local host, you can give local host. Here I'm giving the IP address. Uh, and the port number is going to be 8088. Now we need to create a data input. So you go to settings and data imports. So here we have to create a HTTP event collector. So you need to click on a new token and we need to enter some details like you can give any name and you can click on next and uh, you can just follow next next 
so what it does is it's create a data inputs and it gives us a token number so you can uh, copy the token and we need to use that in the plugin in Jenkins so give that and uh, I'm selecting SSL disable because you know uh, I have disabled that same thing in the HTTP when collector global setting as well because my test system does don't have a SSL enabled now if we do the test connection we are getting a message like uh, no route to host or connection failed this is because the port 8088 is not opened so we need to enter 8088 into the firewall exception and let's uh, reload okay let's do the test connection and now you can see the Splunk is connected uh, properly in the Jenkins Now let's restart the Jenkins server. So let's wait for the Jenkins master to be restarted. And also let's restart the Splunk server. Okay, so the Splunk is restarted. So let's log in again with the admin account and the password. And looks like the Jenkins is also restarted so let's log in to Jenkins using admin and password okay great so now let's go to the Splunk app for Jenkins in Splunk instance now if you see we may not see any inputs in the app at this point uh, because we have uh, not created any jobs or we have not run any builds uh, we have not done any action in the Jenkins instance after we configured uh, the Splunk app for Jenkins so let's create some jobs okay so let's create some test jobs so I'm just trying to execute a shell command okay to just give some output so uh, it doesn't matter what kind of job you want to create this is just for test but in your real production instance you can you will be having uh, your own uh, jobs which you can monitor Now we have created some test jobs, some are uh, in uh, build successful and some are in build fail status. So now let's check the reports in the Splunk app for Jenkins. Now if you see, we are able to see a you know, lot of data because I tried to create uh, more jobs so that you know we'll be having some uh, data showing up here. So if you see, we can see the reports like job to job one uh, how many builds are has been done and you know how many failure so you can uh, go through this because uh, it, it give a lot of information like Jenkins build status history the last build status so you can will be getting a lot of information on this uh, screen so you have also have different tabs like audit trial uh, Jenkins health Jenkins node so audit trial if you see we are getting a lot of information what has been done in each job so let's uh, go through this if you go to the tab Jenkins health uh, you can see uh, different uh, charts which talks about JVM memory JVM threads queue status nodes so it's give a lot of information like a master node topology if you have multiple nodes it will also give the uh, details on what all the nodes
since we have only just one node it's uh, giving us only one node status okay and uh, you you can go to the Jenkins nodes as well so it's specifically for nodes so you can see there is only one node as Jenkins master so if you have any other nodes like uh, Jenkins slaves uh, it will show up those details as well and you can also see there are a lot of alerts pre-configured alerts available so you can make use of that as well like you know job spending in queue over 10 minutes so there are other stuff and you can also create custom panels using the existing reports Now you can see like I have created some test custom report using some of the data. So you can also try to create your own uh, reports using this. And you can also do searches because all this data is indexed into Splunk. So you can do index and the, the index name will be starting with uh, Jenkins. So you can search with that and you'll have a lot of uh, uh, data available so using these uh, parameters you can make your own search queries and you can create your own reports now if you go to settings and index you will be able to see the index listed there like Jenkins all those Jenkins uh, indexes will be listed here Okay, let's go to the Splunk server and if you go to the location uh, inside the slash opt Splunk okay so you I'm already inside slash opt Splunk and inside that if you go to slash etc slash apps so this is the location where the app Splunk app for Jenkins is installed so if you go inside the app you'll be able to see some folders Okay, so you can see some the folders like app server bin default and metadata static so you have a lot of information here so if you want to make any changes you will be able to do it directly from this location as well but be careful on what you are doing because uh, that setting will impact uh, your uh, application and uh, how you are getting the data to summarize we have seen how to install Jenkins app for Splunk and configure the data using Jenkins plugin. We can see the default dashboards available under Jenkins app. We can easily track the audit logs, build status, performance, and node status, etc. In the upcoming tutorial, uh, I'll be making use of uh, Prometheus and Grafana to monitor the Jenkins. So I hope this tutorial is informative for you and thank you for watching. Kindly subscribe to my channel, like the video, share, and comment.